Okay, so let's add the decimal 0.3 to the fraction 4 and 1 half. And we're going to do this without a calculator. So some of you are out there, what do you mean without a calculator? I don't do math without a calculator. And if I had to do this without a calculator, maybe your expression would be like this. Listen, you got to relax and settle down. We have to keep reviewing basic arithmetic. Okay, it's very, very important in uh, all levels of mathematics. Obviously, if you're you know, doing basic math, you know, maybe you're, you know, basic math is a relative, relative term. Maybe you're learning this right now in school, you know, for the first time. So it's not so basic, but maybe you're reviewing this, you know, and that's good. Okay. You're reviewing uh, basic arithmetic. What we want to do is just get away from always using our calculator because there's going to be uh, times where uh, you're going to be taking a test or exam and you're going to be like, no calculators allowed. And you got to be able to handle a problem like this. So this is a nice, uh, easy problem, fairly easy. And if it's, you know, kind of scary, just stick with me. Believe me, at the end of this video, you're going to have a happy face. And we're going to do this in two ways. We're going to take two different approaches. Um, so again, just a nice little prompt to review some basic concepts and arithmetic. So we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Well, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. So I have all the basic courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here soon, uh, college algebra. I have tons of those type of courses, and I have a lot of people like homeschoolers or independent learners or people in uh, charter schools that use my uh, courses as a complete full curriculum. But I also have many, many courses for those of you studying uh, for very important exams in your life, like the GED or teaching certification exam or the SAT, ACT, nursing exam, ACUPLACE or CLEP exam, you name it. There's a lot of reasons people uh, study mathematics, you know, uh, outside of a math course. So I have uh, a lot of different specialty courses that can help you out. So, you know, again, just go to my uh, website and check out my course catalog. And if I don't have something, you know, drop me a line in my contact form and I'll see uh, what I can do for you, either in developing a course or just giving you some guidance on how to approach your exam. Okay. But uh, if you really, really want to uh, improve in mathematics or learn math, you got to focus in on note taking. I call this the golden rule of math over decades of teaching the subject. One thing is clear to me, those students who take great math notes end up with almost uh, great math grades. They look like this person at the end of the year. And then those people who don't take math notes, all right, just not into math notes. It's like, no, you know, they don't like doing it. Okay. They think it's optional. And that was me back in the good old days. I'd be like, you know what? I'm better at looking at people do math, you know, I just can sit back and look at the teacher and I'd be like, yeah, I understand what's going on, but I don't, I don't need to write it down. I didn't understand that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to get the information into my brain. You have to be writing things down. Plus, you got to put that cell phone away because you're going to be distracted. Okay, there's so many distractions. I mean, I went to school way back in the good old days where there was no cell phones, and I had plenty of distractions. I can only imagine if I had a cell phone too. I mean, who knows? I probably wouldn't be here making this video. I don't think I would have gotten that far in school. So I get the, I get it that you are under pressure, you're distracted, but you got to focus on taking great math notes. This is the key to being successful in mathematics. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and tackle this problem. Again, this doesn't have to be scary. We have 0.3 plus 4 and 1 half. So we're going we're gonna to approach this problem in two different ways, okay? Now, if you want to um, do this problem without the aid of a calculator, go ahead and do it. As long as you get the right answer, that's what counts. But you want to know uh, both approaches. Okay, so we have 0.3 plus 4 and 1 half. So we can kind of think of this right here, uh, this 0.3, we can be thinking, well, let's just kind of say this much. We have a decimal plus a fraction. So you're like, well, either we need to go make this decimal into a fraction. So we have a, a fraction plus a fraction. So I can work with two fractions or I got to take this fraction and make it into a decimal. 
Okay, so I have a decimal plus a decimal. So we're going to actually do this problem uh, both ways, all right? So first of all, let's talk about how we write 0.3 as a fraction. So how do I say this, okay, 0.3? I'm going to do a video here. Um, been thinking about it for a while, how to say decimals, okay? So this is 0.3, but that's not going to really help us out. You need to uh, understand place value. This is, uh, we, the way we say this is three-tenths, okay? So you need to understand how to, how to describe or how to uh, say a decimal other than just 0.3. So if you can say, oh, this is three-tenths, then you can write the decimal as a fraction. If you know how to say it, then you can write it as a fraction. So this is three tenths, all right? Three divided by 10 is 0.3. You can go on your calculator later because you're not using your calculator right now, but this is the des this decimal is this as a fraction. So if you don't know how to write a decimal as a fraction, then you know we're gonna have some uh, trouble, uh, but I'm sure I've done tons of videos. Check out my uh, pre-algebra playlist on converting decimals to fractions, okay? All right, so 0.3 uh, is the same thing as the fraction 3 tenths, and then we have 4 and 1 half. This is a mixed number fraction, okay? So deaths or fractions can come in three different flavors. We can have a proper fraction. That would be something like this. A proper fraction is where the denominator, this bottom number, is bigger than the top number, the numerator, okay? Or we can have something like this, all right, where the top number, the numerator, is bigger than the denominator, all right? And this is called a uh, improper fraction. So we have proper fraction, improper fraction, and then something like this is called a mixed number, all right? A mixed number fraction. So we have to be able to write this mixed number fraction as an improper fraction. So how do we do that? Well, we take this two and we multiply it by four, all right? So that's two times four is eight, and then we're gonna add that one. Okay, so two times four is eight, plus one is nine, and then we write it over this little guy right here, two, nine halves. So um, again, I have additional videos uh, in my pre-algebra playlist on fractions, a ton of stuff on fractions. So you got to be able to write or know how to write a mixed number uh, fraction as an improper fraction. You, you need to be familiar with these terms, proper fraction, improper fraction, mixed numbers, all that kind of good stuff. All right. So now that we can understand this or we know this, we're like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Now we can go ahead and uh, tackle this problem. Of course, you're gonna um, need to know something about fractions, and I have tons of videos on fractions in my pre-algebra playlist. So if you're not, you know, uh, um, you know, able to follow me when I get to adding these two fractions, don't worry, no stress at all. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and set this problem again. Uh, set this problem up. Uh, so we have 0.3 plus four and one half. So we can't do anything with the problem right now. Uh, as it is. So 0.3 as a fraction is 3 tenths and 4 and 1 half, that mixed number as an improper fraction is 9 halves. So now I have two fractions, okay, they have their own little denominators and numerators. So now this is the point where you need to know how to add fractions, okay? So adding fractions or subtracting fractions is all this business with the lowest common denominator, right? The lowest common denominator, that's really scary for a lot of people. They're like, the lowest common denominator, what's that? Oh, I, I know that. I don't, listen, relax, relax. No need to stress the LCD. Have tons of videos on, on uh, uh, how to find the lowest common denominator. But basically, we can't add fractions unless they have the same denominator. So let's just, real quick, let's say seven-fifths plus one-fifths, okay, if you have the same denominator, i.e. common denominators, and these, are, these guys are perfectly in common, then all we need to do is add the numerator. So seven plus one is eight, that would be eight fifths. You're like, oh, okay, that's not so bad. So let's just say, all right, that's not too bad, I'm getting it, all right. So you need to uh, do a quick review on how to add or subtract fractions with the LCD. But in this case, if I, I have three tenths plus nine halves, um, obviously, these denominators are not the same number. They're not in common, okay? So I have 10 and two, they're not in common, so I need to make them in common. So how can I make these two guys in common? Well, the LCD here actually is 10, but I want you to think of it in this way. I need to make these numbers the same. So what if I multiply this by a five? Okay, well, two times five would be 10, that would be nice, but if I do that, I have to multiply that top number 
by five as well. So I multiply the denominator by five, I gotta multiply the numerator by five, and that's totally allowed in mathematics, okay? When we're working with fractions. So now I end up with a new fraction, five times nine is 45, okay? And then uh, two times five is 10. So I have a 10 down here, and I have a 10 down here. So now finally I have common uh, denominators, and I'm feeling good about myself. So I have three tenths plus uh, 45 over 10. So now uh, all you need to do is add the numerators. So 3 plus 45 is 48. So we have 48 over 10. And at this stage of the problem, what you want to do is you always want to reduce or simplify your uh, your um, answers that are fraction. So fractions, right? So 48 over 10, we can reduce as 24 over 5. And if you gave me this answer, okay, I would definitely give you a smile. Oh, that's a terribly small, terrible, terrible smiley face. Let's, let's do something better here. Let's give you a nice smiley face, an A plus, and a 100%. Matter of fact, I might say, just take the rest of the year off. You're awesome. Okay, so this is correct. But if you wanted to take an additional step, okay, and write this as a mixed number, you could do that. Okay, not, it's not necessary, but if you're really like really good with your arithmetic, you could um, uh, turn this into a decimal. Okay, the decimal equivalent to this is 4.8. Now, if you want to cheat here real quick and get your calculator and just take 24 divided by 5, you'll see that it is 4.8. Uh, but this is a uh, correct answer. Okay, so this is a correct answer as well as a decimal, but this is perfectly fine. Okay, so again, you know, uh, numbers can be expressed in different ways. All right, so that's the first way of doing this problem with fractions. Let's take a look at another way we can uh, uh, handle this problem, okay, an easier way. So we have 0.3. Okay, so 0.3 is, in fact, a decimal 0.3. In this uh, problem, we're going to take uh, this fraction, okay, we have a decimal plus a fraction. We're going to uh, turn this into a problem where it's going to be a decimal plus a decimal. Okay, so that means that we're going to have to take this 4 and 1 half and write it as a decimal. And that's pretty easy, right? So 4 and 1 half, hopefully you, you'll understand, oh, that's the decimal 4.5. Okay, because 0.5 is 1 half. Right? So hopefully most of you out there are like, yep, yep, I get that. So 4 and 1 half is the same thing as a decimal 4.5. Now at this uh, juncture in the problem, all you have to do is remember how to add decimals. And the way you add decimals is we're going to do like our old school or real basic um, addition. We're going to take this number, 4.5. Okay, there's the decimal point. Then we have 0.3, and we have to line up the decimal points. Okay. So, again, basic arithmetic, things that, you know, uh, well, it's basic if you've already studied this. But if you're learning this right now and you're understanding, good for you. All right, so what we're going to do is just add down. So I get 4, and then I'm going to add uh, the decimals here, 5 and 3 is 8. And look here, we have 4.8. Looks a lot like this answer up here, 4.8, okay? So the more math you know, all right, more arithmetic you know, the more happy faces you're going to have in mathematics, okay? Uh, the, the bottom line is you got to take math one step at a time, and you got to respect uh, arithmetic, I think a lot of people, especially if you're learning algebra or you're doing more advanced mathematics, you're like, you know, if you think about your education over here in elementary school, you learned a bunch of arithmetic, okay? And then in middle school, you know, you started like becoming, you know, more advanced, you know, you have different teachers, you have a locker in your school, you're like, oh, okay, it's pretty cool. You're kind of learning some algebra concepts. And then when you're in high school, well, forget about it. You're like, you know, all grown up. You're learning all kinds of algebra 2, geometry. And uh, what tends to happen is people think, oh, I don't need to remember that arithmetic stuff. That's when I was a little kid. I don't need to remember this. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. You need to understand arithmetic very, very well. It's the foundation of all this stuff. And typically, what I see is when a lot of students are struggling in these other areas of mathematics is they, they have a weak arithmetic foundation. So don't feel bad if you needed to review this and you're like in an algebra course. You're like, all right, let me just see if I can remember this stuff. And by the way, too, some of you have been away from math for a long, long time. Uh, hey, this is all refresher stuff. It's like riding a bike again. You're going to have to go back and do it again and practice. So hopefully this video was useful. Okay. And in fact, 
if you learned something or if you reviewed something uh, that you once knew years ago uh, and you liked the video, please consider smashing that like button. I would like that. Also, uh, please consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for a long time, have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized in various playlists, basic to advanced mathematics, all there for you. My job, my passion is to teach math in a clear and understandable way, keep you excited about the subject, okay? So you can continue to learn as much math as you want to, and you should keep going. The more math you know, the better off you're gonna be in life. That's my feeling about it. But if you want my assistance, my best resources, again, can be found by following those links in the description of this video. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics uh, journeys and adventures. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.